Hey everyone, it's Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net and in this video, we're gonna talk about the half loop forehand, coming up. On a traditional forehand, what we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years is we've typically seen guys getting their forehand, their right hand or their hitting hand up to about the height of their shoulder as they take the racket back. But over the last couple years, we've seen a change where players aren't bringing that hitting hand up to the hitting shoulder anymore. They're bringing it lower, usually just below the chest or you know a point at the bottom of the chest or the top of the ribs there. That's the point we're starting to see people bring their hitting hand to. And we see this with a lot of different players on tour. We see this with Roger Federer, we see it with Bonini, Sam Querrey. There's a bunch of players that you know have either purposely adopted this or switched this naturally over time as the game has gotten faster. So typically what we've seen is the right hand on a right-handed player going to about the shoulder height as a person makes their loop on the forehand. So you can see Doral here, what he's doing is he's getting the right hand even with the shoulder. That's a pretty typical loop take back on the forehand and what you've seen traditionally taught in the last you know 10 to 20 years. But what we've seen over the last couple years is we've seen players starting to do a half loop and just bring that hitting hand to about the bottom of the chest area as they bring the racket back. So you can see Doral here, what he's doing is instead of getting it up here, he's shortening and he's just going to about here. So he comes from this position and then he's going to about here and it lines up for most guys about the bottom of the chest area right around here and thus the half loop. We're not getting the same height here. We've essentially cut this in half. Now we're dropping the racket and then we're coming through and we're swinging. On the regular loop, one of the biggest benefits people found is not only do you get a good rhythm and timing when you come up here and you drop the racket, but gravity helps you when you come from here. Gravity will naturally help you increase your racket head speed as you come down. You might say, well, Jason, why don't I want you know, gravity to help me in my swing? Why don't I want to continue with that? Well, what we've seen over the last few years is players getting the racket when they drop here, really getting the racket in a position where it's off to the right like this, it's off to the side, and getting a tremendous amount of racket head speed when they come from there to here. There's a really big move that takes place from here to here, and when that happens and the players swing forward, they get a lot of racket head speed. So what we've seen is that a lot of players, instead of coming up here and getting that extra racket head speed from naturally letting the racket drop, they've taken that, decreased it to here so that it doesn't take as much time to get through their swing, and they've relied more on just this big move from here to here to generate their racket head speed and come through and hit the ball. And really the biggest benefit of the half loop, there's probably two. One, you're taking a shorter swing vertically like this, right? We haven't taken as big of a swing. So timing the ball should be easier. It should also be easier for me to play closer to the baseline and take balls early because I'm not taking as much time preparing in my swing. So to come from here and go up and then come down should take more time than it takes me to come from here and just to go here and drop it. You've cut that loop in half. The benefit is easier timing and the ability to take the ball earlier. So now we're gonna go into some drill situations that focus on the half loop and some things you can practice at home. In this first drill, I'm gonna hand feed Doral slowly and what I'm gonna have him do is just focus on a half loop himself. He's gonna to try to cut his normal swing in half and not bring it up so high. He's gonna take five balls cross court. There we go, that was good. And to me, it looked like Doral kept it in a half loop himself. We'll, you know, we'll look at the video in a little bit and we'll kind of check it out. But it did look like he did a very good job. Now I need to find ways to take time away from him. One of the best ways to get someone to shorten up their swing is to try to take their time away by feeding really quickly or even feeding low balls fast. There's different ways to do it. I'm gonna give him some nasty feeds where I'm trying to force him to shorten it up. He's gonna take five forehands, really tough, quick feeds. Those look good. And then in the last drill, what I'm gonna to try to do is feed a combination of those quick feeds and some low balls. The low ball should force him, number one, to bend, but also force him to keep that hand a little bit lower when he tries to hit the ball. So here we go. Okay, there we go. So make sure you get out on the practice court and use those drills to help you practice your half loop forehand. Find out if you prefer it to a full loop forehand. And if you like this video and you wanna see more content just like this, smash that like and subscribe button below. Also hit your notification bell to be alerted anytime a video for Tennis Unleashed goes up on YouTube. See you next time.